do it afterwards. All right. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to show you how to display text onto a tree or onto a matrix. Um, I've got a new show folder here. I've just allocated a block of 20,000 channels. Um, on the layout, I'm going to add a matrix. Um, uh, we'll make it a pretty dense matrix. Uh, let's make it 32 rows high by 100 pixels long. It's a horizontal matrix. And because I'm going to display this on a virtual matrix, uh, it needs to be in the top left. Um, so that looks pretty good. Sorry, I'll save that. Um, and, and so that's defining uh, the layout that we're going to put things onto. Um, I could quickly go into the sequencer, create a very quick sequence here. Um, I don't know, let's just throw the butterfly on it for the whole duration. There we go. And let's save that. We'll call that butterfly. Done. All right. So now we've set up a sequence and we've defined our matrix and everything else. So we're all good to go. Uh, let's come over to our scheduler and in the scheduler we'll switch to our show folder. Uh, desktop, text demo, select folder. Okay, obviously there's nothing in here. Um, and what we'll do is let's just quickly show that it's working. Um, we'll add an FSCQ, which is our butterfly FSCQ. Uh, done. Um, and now because I will actually want to show this matrix on the screen, uh, I need to add a virtual matrix. So we'll go in and add that. And if you remember, um, we'll call this matrix. Uh, it was actually 32 high, it was 100 wide. Uh, we're not rotating it. Uh, the image quality will make normal because I like how that looks better. And it starts on channel one, we didn't do anything fancy. Um, and because that matrix is actually a bit of a rectangle, we'll resize this. Looks good, looks good, looks good. We'll save it. Now we'll go and play this. And there's our butterfly. Okay, so everything now looks like it's working okay. My matrix is displaying okay. It plays my sequence. Everything's good. So now let's go and create a new sequence. And this time I'm going to right click up here because I need to add an advanced playlist. Um, because only in an advanced playlist do you have access to the ability to actually put text onto a matrix. Uh, so again, we right click and we do an add text. And so here's my text. I'm going to call it text. It's just a name. Uh, I do need to choose a matrix, which I don't actually have right now. So we'll get out of here and we'll go back and we actually need to describe what our matrix actually looks like. So if this was a tree that we we're putting it on, we'd have to describe how our tree is wired up. And it's done in a very similar way to the way you do it in XLights itself. So, um, Let's call it M. Uh, we said it had 32 strings. Those strings are 100 long. Uh, there's one strand. It starts at channel one. It starts in the top left. And it's a horizontal matrix. Okay, and save. So now when I come back into my text effect here, it's now selected that matrix. So this is the matrix this is going to render on. And the reason it needs to understand what the matrix looks like is because it needs to know how to render the text onto the matrix itself. Um, we're just going to do a, a normal text effect. Um, and then there's two fields here, the format and the text field. Um, the format field is actually what gets displayed. The text field is the value that you can control remotely. And if you want the value that you're going to put in the text field to appear, you need to put in the format string, something which says percent text in all capitals and a percent. And then if I write hello world here, it should display hello world and replace that text variable. 
um, let's go and choose a suitable font. Uh, let's choose a suitable color um, for that. We'll just use normal orientation. We'll move it from right to left because that tends to look the most natural. Um, and let's make the text effect 30 seconds long. So if we click OK, now if we play selected, our Hello World appears and our text scrolls across just as you would expect it to. OK, now if we want to change the text, we need to use a web API. And so um, Postman here is a plugin for Chrome which lets you send a, um, an API call. And so in this case, because it's local to my machine, we call it local host. Oh, damn it. Let's go back and play that again. And we'll put it in loop mode so it doesn't stop. Okay. So it's go to, goes to local host. Um, all of the commands which cause the scheduler to do something uh, are held in this X schedule command. Um, uh, sort of, it's like a subfolder, but it's not really a folder. The question mark says, well, after this is going to be a set of parameters. The first one is the command that we're actually asking it to execute, which in this case is to set the current text. And then you set a set of parameters. Now the first parameter is the actual matrix name. Uh, which in this case was M, uh, the text that we want to display. And then there's a comma at the end. And the reason there's a comma at the end is because there's actually a whole bunch of other parameters that you can provide to do things like change the font and things like that, but we're not going to do that. So when the text comes back on, if I click send, this should change the text, which it didn't. Why didn't it? because it probably should have said text there. Yeah, there we go. Sorry, it wasn't the matrix name, it's the name of the text of, uh, player item. And you can see over here, it's changed the text. And, and the, the where the text came from, if we go back to the scheduler here, it was that name I put up there. So I was telling that text to change. So we went and found this particular text effect and it changed this string, hello world, and turned it into new text, which is what it's now displaying on the matrix. Now, you can also do things like, um, you can put other static text in here. So I can so, say hello text. And if I stop this and play it again, You can see it now says, hello, hello world. And it comes back around again. And if I was to put a name in here and send it again, it's changed it to say, hello, Gareth. So you can have a set of static text here. There's, there's actually also a bunch of other um, variables that can go in this as well. Hello, Keith. Sorry? Hello, Keith. Oh, hello. Um, so there's also a bunch of other variables that you can put in here as well. So if I go to the source code, because I haven't written all this down, um, there's, there's also some things like you can do uh, the, the date and the time and things. So if you want this to say, um, sorry. Let's go to the right place. If you want to display the, the, the day, month and year here, you can type um, percent day dash percent month percent dash percent year percent. Click OK. We'll stop it. We'll play it again. And now you can see it's actually well, obviously the year's wrong. I think I got that wrong. I think that should say percent year four to say it's a four digit year that we want to display. And if I play it, it's the 25th of March, 2017. So I can display the date. It can also do countdowns and everything else. And so despite the fact that that's now quite a complicated string, 
I, I can still come back here and, and change it from hello, hello world to hello, Gareth. Okay, so which that's... file were the list of the, those variables actually in? Uh, that's actually in the source code. This is actually the, um, this is actually the function that actually does all the replacement. I, I need to pull it out and it'll appear in the manual at the appropriate point in time when the manual gets updated with all the scheduler information. Uh, yeah, so there's a, you, sorry, yeah, you have a, a text file, don't you, actually, in GitHub with uh, yeah, the API I do, but it, it it only has the API command. So it has it has this command documented. It doesn't have all of these things documented. It's one of those things that uh, we need to get around to. And I was hoping to uh, leverage off the back of uh, the, the manual riders and the work that they were doing. So that's, uh, that's playlist item text. Playlist item text is the, um, oh, sorry, the file. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's basically the same. Um, so yeah, when you add text here, everything here's a playlist item. This one's a text one. This one's the RDS one and so forth. And so it happens to be the one. Now, the other thing you can do here is you can do, do other cool things like um, I can add an FSCQ into the same step and I can go and choose my butterfly, um, which is all cool. Um, and if I click OK and if I play that, um, all you can see is the butterfly, which is not particularly useful. So let's turn it around. Um, the butterfly at the moment is set as priority one and the text is also set as priority one. So let's lift it up a little and make it a priority two item. And click OK. And if we stop it and play selected, that made no difference. Why well, that made no difference? Uh, could it be the color made it a little bit? Oh, I know why. The reason it made no difference is because it only overwrites if it's black. Let's just make it overwrite. And when we play it, oh, no, we don't want to do that either um, because it overrode the entire butterfly effect. Let's make it actually, let's mask out if not zero. So now what it's doing is it's using the text and it's using the text as a mask on the butterfly effect. So you get the butterfly effect in the background with the text in the foreground, but in black. Um, you can do kind of the reverse here where you say uh, mask out if zero. So what that will do is it will actually use the butterfly effect to color the text in. So now you get the butterfly effect burning through where the text is. Um, you can also uh, blend them together. So you can do things here like say, uh, where are we? Um, uh, where's maximum? We'll take the maximum. So, so this is going to blend it together so that it overlays and it basically takes the maximum colour. If this was white, this would be particularly effective. It would stand out a little bit more than it does there. But so there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can blend that text in with uh, the rest of your sequence while it's playing. So it doesn't have to be either text or play the sequence. It can be uh, other options as well. Um, uh, which uh, average might provide another interesting alternative. So it kind of blends it together. This dims everything down because where the text effect is black, it has the tendency to actually lower the brightness. 
And so now you just get the high brightness where the text is coming across. So a whole bunch of interesting ways to blend real-time text display into what is a, a background sequence that you're running. Any questions? No, that's very cool. Thank you, Keith. That's okay. Not a problem. Keith, that was great, thanks. Uh, I'm going to stop recording this somehow. <laughs>